You are now listening to The Jason D'Amico Show. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Jason D'Amico Show. As you can see, this is a little bit of a different uh, backdrop than what you're used to as far as the, the show and the podcast format. Uh, just wanted to make a quick personal video for you all before we get started on this very uh, special uh, memorial and, and remembrance episode. Uh, Cody Miles and I were very good friends uh, back in high school. We made some music together. We uh, we played shows together, and you know we obviously went to high school together and were around a lot of the same circles of friends. Um, this episode was captured in the late summer of 2019. I'm talking to you all right now on December 4th of 2022. And the reason why this episode was not initially, it actually was released, but uh, we, we took it down a couple of days after it was released in 2019 due to um, some personal uh, reasons that, that Cody actually relayed back to me after we had captured it. So I did take it down off the internet in respect to him and what him and his family were kind of going through at that time in 2019. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Cody did pass from liver cancer November 25th of 2022, This just this past, within the last week or two. Uh, I just got back. I'm obviously, you know, kind of uh, dressed for the occasion. I uh, just got back from his uh, celebration of life service and uh memorial service at New Hope Church in Durham, North Carolina. And uh, I just wanted to make this quick video to to say that this was captured three years ago. Um, this is a very special conversation. Uh, one of the last, actually it is the last conversation that I had with Cody that was, that was captured on camera. And if you're interested in Learning more about Cody, um, for those of you who do know him and have known him for years, you know that uh, he and I did make music together back uh, around 2010, 2011, 2012. And a uh, matter of fact, we actually, this was the room that we uh, recorded in together. And I'll see if I can insert kind of like a, a screenshot of um, the, the, the space that we used to work in because it's obviously uh, quite different than what you see today. And for me personally, it just shows that it shows who Cody really was as, as a human being and as a spirit, because we both were just starting out really with music. I mean, I've been playing for a while up until that point, but from a production standpoint, you know, I just look at the picture, right? I mean, you know, it's like, it's an unfinished basement and, uh, a very limited setup, but he believed in me. He believed in me uh, more at times than I believed in myself. And he was patient with me because I had a lot, and you know, we were patient with each other, but he was very patient with me, with, with me learning the recording process. And, and he always was just so encouraging. And um, it was a real camaraderie and, and we were, we were in it together and we were just, you know, kind of, you know, g just going through all that together in that whole learning process. Um, he was really the first artist that I started producing, uh, that I, that I started collaborating with, you know, and, and over a decade later now, I just have to give him extreme gratitude for being here and just for, you know, being a friend and, and giving me a shot with his music. And, uh, you know, just, again, just the friendship and, and just so, so gracious to uh, have had those memories with him. I will leave a link down to that music below. I am uh, looking forward very much so to re-releasing some of the music uh, and remixing it uh, coming up probably within the next few months uh, throughout 2023 into the year of 2023. And, uh, you know, just in honor of his legacy, we were in the, the middle of working on our second record in around 2012, 2013, when 
he ended up moving out to the west part of North Carolina, and I ended up going up to New York um, to pursue some career moves. And, um, you know, we just, we stayed in touch, obviously, as, as great friends, but we just, at that point, we just kind of stopped working together on music. But I have that all on a, a computer down the hall that I, I, I need to go through, and it's, you know, 10 plus years old of, of just like, Pro Tools software and a bunch of stuff. So um, I just want to make this quick video to let you guys know that, you know, we, I was talking with some friends and family and uh, this was upon request by some, by some of Cody's um, most intimate friends and family to, uh, to see some of this kind of like archive material that I have of him. And I'm going to try my best to find as much uh, that I can get to you guys. Click the links down below. I've got a special compilation video from when we perform when we performed at Pittsburgh Baptist Church uh, back in 2011 with the CM Represent project that um, he and I started. And also, uh, I'll leave some links down below of where you can kind of leave uh, some thoughts or or some donations, um, some some condolence gifts uh, down below. Uh, in in uh, memory of him and also uh, to keep his family uh, and his wife in your prayers and I'll have that all down below where you can uh, leave your information and your gifts. I want to thank you guys so much for being here. I know that a lot of the subscribers on the channel, you probably don't know who Cody is. Um, you will get a great feel for him though, uh, watching, uh, this, this episode and, uh, he's, he's just, he, he was larger than life. Uh, he lives in all of our hearts and, and we definitely know where he is now. Uh, and we definitely know he's no longer in pain and in paradise and, um, he, undeniably we can feel his presence. Uh, it was very clear today that he's, he's definitely, uh, he's he's with us in spirit. So uh, this was for you, man. Love you, brother, and uh, love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in for this very special episode in in remembrance of Cody Miles. We are on. Hello. Do you have a uh... hello? Hello. Are we on. Welcome to the Artist Lounge. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be eventful. Eventful. Oh, you know it. Welcome, everybody, to this episode of The Artist Lounge. I'm your host, Jason D'Amico, in the uh, bunker of New Blue Entertainment <laughs> Studios and uh, New Blue Studios, whatever you want to call it. And um, very special guest for you. I say that every week be or every episode because every single person on here is a special guest. But I got to say, like, this guy and I go way back. This is... 10 12 years now in the running right out the womb so uh rapper lyricist artist um co-writer with me and uh we ran under the the project together entitled cm represent back in the day and it's still around we just haven't done anything for quite a while we'll get into that <laughs> but um and also actor and security guard now, believe it or not. Officer. Security officer. Secure, I'm sorry, security officer. How dare you? Please welcome to the Artist Lounge, my very good friend, Mr. Cody Miles. What's up? What's up? The Gentle Giant. <laughs> That's right. Big country. Looking good. Thank you, buddy. Looking Thank good, you. big boy. Oh, yeah. Look at you. <laughs> so, yeah, I got a haircut. So... Um, let's just get right into it. So beginning stages, you know, and when we sat here very quickly, just drummed up our little bullet points just so we could stay on track. Boy, your chicken stretch, your chicken scratch is not chicken changed. Stretch, stretch, <laughs> chicken stretch, stretch, scratch is not changed. Still can't read it. Uh, um, oh, that's something we should bring up, uh, mm. that I forgot. Well, I I'll, I'll figure that. All right. So write that down here, actually. Okay, beginning stages. Mm -hmm. Let's get into family life a little bit. 
Okay. I mean, a lot of this I already know because I've known you, but obviously for the viewers. Um, yeah, we're basically married, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's just start from the beginning. Uh-huh. Uh, how how did it happen? How, wh- where 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 was the flair for um, lyrics? Where where was the gift? Uh, growing up, my mother. Uh, my father were big country fans, which is crazy. So growing up, I listened to a lot of country and never really got into the hip hop scene at all. And then my friend, um, he, I let, he let me borrow his iPad or iPod. Sorry, kids. We had iPods back in the day <laughs> and um, had all these hip hop artists on it. Had a, a tribe called Quest, had um, uh NWA had Eminem, it had I, it had everybody, and I just fell in love with the stories you can tell through hip hop, and I fell in love with just the way they manipulate words and bend words and make stuff that's not supposed to rhyme rhyme, like orange. Yeah, it's it's nuts. It blew me away, and I was like, I'm gonna do that one day. And then one day I wrote something on a piece of paper. I was like. That is terrible. Never mind. But it never left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It never left. I uh, I just fell in love with it. And I love it to this day. Um, and that was kind of like the turning point for me. I was like, you know what? Even if I don't make anything out of it, I like writing. I like coming up with songs. It, it's even therapeutic for me. It helps me deal with stuff. And uh, it's just fun. You know? Yeah. It's just like when people sing in the shower, I rap in the shower. Same thing. Right. Now, the freestyle, you know, because that was always a big thing for you. How did that come about? Was that... Uh, I saw a battle in my school one day. R- was it Northwood? Uh, no. Okay. There's a school called uh, Perry Harris, and I went there in... Uh, oh, so middle school. Okay. Some people were just gathered around and just flying off the handle. I was like, that is actually awesome. <laughs> it's like, they're just, they're just spewing things out and just like talking about your mama this, your mama that, and... uh and then at the end, they go and shake hands. Right. I'm like, you basically just said the worst stuff you could possibly think of. And then you're like, nah, we're cool. And it was just fun to just try to pop it on the fly and see what you come up with. 90% of the time, what comes out of your mouth is just plain stupidity, but it's awesome. <laughs> was it a struggle in the beginning for you, or was it more or oh, less? Oh, yeah. I could probably just rhyme cat, hat, and bat, and that's about the best I could do. Right. Uh, I remember the first time I tried to do it, I froze up. Um. And uh, then I then I turn on the radio, and I heard the Eminem song "Lose Yourself." And I was like, "No, I'm done. I'm probably just gonna go work at Subway or something. This is terrible." But then I just kept loving it, and um, the rhymes got better. I uh, got better at doing it. It's just you know, like anything, just do it in your free time. I do it on the way to work. I'll uh, go on YouTube and just type in freestyle beat and rap on my way to work. Nobody knows that now, except for everybody that I work with. Hey, guys. <laughs> so, in, so in middle school, it, it started burgeoning. Mm-hmm. High school, obviously, where we met. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Psh, you know, uh, that that's a whole other, you know, I, we could go down. A oh, that's freaking <sighs> Alice, we get lost in that rabbit hole. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> but it continued in high school, and... Mm-hmm. I have bullying on here because, and obviously because I'm a longtime friend of yours, I uh, yeah. I know the stories. And uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Let's just let's just cover it for a second because I know that there's a lot of kids out there that could probably uh, find some sort of peace. Yeah, and adults from, too. Yeah, and and just just some guidance yeah. from bullying your doesn't past. stop at the schoolyard. That's one thing I've learned. And, you know, me growing up, I was, you know, I've always been a big guy. I mean, I'm 6'6", 290 right now. So I'm a, I'm an absolute unit. When we say the gentle giant, like, that's been around for a decade, that term. Yeah, gentle, <laughs> gentle giant. I'm nice until it's time not to be nice. But no. Um, but yeah, uh, growing up, I was always very overweight. Uh, just the way it was. Um, junior year. I hit a growth spurt, but until then, it was very much, you know, hey, fatty, or, you know, hey, pig boy, what you doing? And it was, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of, uh, 
A lot of name calling. Uh, I remember one time um, someone put, you know, one of those uh, Halloween snouts you could wear like a pig. Someone put one of those in my locker. Oh, I actually thought that was funny, but uh, it's uh, it, it it is funny. Yeah. Now now that, now that we can like look <laughs> back on it. Yeah, but it wasn't. A, but at the time, you know, I it mean, wasn't fun because also you know, uh, people would be like, you know. Sticks and stones and break your bones work and never hurt you. That's one of the biggest lies we can Absolutely. say. Absolutely. They can cut right to the damn bone. Yeah. And it did for me. But one thing that was crazy was I kind of found like the way I found this in my junior, the way that I can write and write raps, no one else can do it like me. That was my one thing that I felt like separated me. Tried football. I was terrible in football. Yeah, I played I played a left bench. So, I guarded the wall, the water cooler. It was great. Um, wrestled a little bit. Uh, could not play basketball. Uh, yeah, this this height is basically wasted. I can't play wow. basketball. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, we never played ball. Thank I mean, God. From what I can remember, could you imagine? I think we threw the football around once in a you know, like at a at a party or something. But it was never. Oh, I, we no. never played basketball. No, no, no. That, that's just. I mean, your back is too wide to play basketball. You can't even scratch your back. So I don't get how you could even go for a layup or make a shot. Dude, uh, me, I'm... Uh, I'm not uh, mention you're short, but I'm just saying. It, it's <laughs> Basketball is not my game. Yeah. For sure. But uh, the way that I found that I could rap was kind of like my own thing. And I would show it to a couple of people, a couple of friends. And I would have people that would go up and do the whole gangster style, you know, uh, talk, talk. They would rap songs that they heard. And then I would ask them, I was like, well, can you rap it yourself? And they'd be like, well, no. <laughs> so that was kind of my thing of like, well, okay, well, they can be bigger than me, stronger than me, in better shape than me, smarter than me, but they can't say this like me. They can't make this flow like me. Yeah. So it was only, it was like finding my originality. Were there influences that helped with this? And, and if so, who were they in particular? Because I mean, I know a few, but just. They're in high school? Yeah, as far as like the records you were listening to, um, it's it's shifted. Uh, you know, usually it was every every person, you know, Eminem, NWA stuff like that. Um, the old for the hip hop heads and Trap Called Quest, listen to them. Um, but uh, but for me, it kind of shifted when I found a guy named Lecrae. Yeah, and I became very very heavily influenced in his stuff because. The way he did it was he wasn't cussing, even though I cuss like a sailor sometimes when I shouldn't. Sorry, mom. <laughs> uh, but you and I both, unfortunately. He, I know, damn but. it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but um, the way that he was able to do it was just very. He talked about real life situations, but also talked about very positive stuff. Talked about how he grew up without a father and, or talked about how he struggled with significance and struggled to find who he was and ultimately found that in God. And it shocked me because I was like, God and hip hop can't coexist. <laughs> See, that was my thought. Cause I, cause you know what they portray in the media with uh, media is money, cars, money, and girls. Cars, girls. Yeah. If you have that, you style them, but cheer, 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 skirt, skirt, it's but. Gucci Mane. <laughs> <laughs> no disrespect, I, I love Gucci. Oh yeah, but uh, I do too. I can't fit in it though. But <laughs> we uh, listening to the Cray was a big influence, and recently discovered a guy named NF, amazing artist. Yeah, NF is cleaning he up, is, man. He is incredible, cleaning up. And but the, the crazy thing about it is just to find that. Hip hop, and this is what Lecrae talked about. He was like, "Hip hop is so unique because you can talk about anything. Yeah. It's all about a worldview." And one thing he talked about was, "You're not going to please everybody with what you write or what you put out." That goes for music, movies, In general, painting, anything. as an artist. Yeah. And one thing he said, and I'm actually going to get this tattooed on my body because it's so impactful for me, is that if you live for people's acceptance, you will die from their rejection. Mm. And that's so powerful. That's huge. For me. Yeah, that's huge. That's why I'm going to get it. Tattooed. That's for somebody out there. Mm -hmm. It's probably me. <laughs> yeah, but that's see, good. I, I want to get it tattooed and look at it every day and remind myself that I don't have to fit into this mold to please somebody. I have to just be me. And if I do that, the right people will come around. 
And it showed through, you know, me writing my lyrics because I started to see how I was just forming myself. Right. And finding who I was. Let's talk about Faith real quick because oh, yeah. obviously with Lecrae, you know, being in the, the Faith outlet of hip hop. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's about to get deep, folks. I'm assuming that he was the primary influence for you. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So when, when, when and how did you make the decision to really focus more on the faith-based aspect of writing and artistry? I just didn't like what I wrote before afterwards. Afterwards, you know, obviously, you know, I gave my life to Jesus and I, uh, I kind of, you know, went on this little path of self-discovery, but yeah. I go back and look at some of my stuff and I don't like it. I, mm. I don't like writing about objectifying women. I don't like, I didn't, I didn't have money. So I don't know why I even wrote about that. Uh, I was just regurgitating everything Every, I was hearing off the else, media yeah. and hearing off of the radio. And I just wanted to write about something that was real to me. And even if it never went anywhere, that's fine. It's just an outlet. Just like working out is an outlet. You might never have a Greek God body, but if it makes you feel good, do it. You know, get that stress off your off your off your chest, and it yeah. just you know. When I started doing that, it just you know it's therapeutic for me, and it helped to kind of mold who I am now. It's like a medicinal quality then, and I, I mean I could totally self. Yeah, that's a four dollar word. <laughs> I could totally relate. Mm-hmm. Uh, now I, I what I was gonna say earlier. When I said I'll I'll re- I'll remind myself to bring this up now I think is a good time. Dyslexia. <laughs> yeah, I have a little bit of dyslexia. Which you, you and I haven't really talked about for a, a long time. But oh, that yeah. was one thing that we always <laughs> joked about in the studio together was, <laughs> you know, when you're scribbling on the notepad and I'm like, you know, you scr- can't read screaming at at the time it was Pro Tools eight, <laughs> way back. <laughs> You have not lived until you've seen this man get mad at a keyboard. I, I asked, so I, I asked. It's uh, amazing. I asked Cody when he came in. I said, uh, "Have you missed my? What, how did I phrase it? Have you missed my raging? Have I or missed like, your outbursts? My outbursts. Have you missed my outbursts?" And I said, "Oh yes." I have. There were moments where, literally, for twenty thirty minutes, I would just sit at the computer and just start. It's like, have you ever been? In a situation where a couple starts fighting and you're like the awkward third wheel, you're sitting there just like, that's what it was like when he's going off on the keyboard. You son of a bitch, I hate you, damn it. I'm here, just sitting there just like, okay, here, sorry. Here's, and, and here's the funny thing, because, you know, when I was 17, 18 years old, I think a lot of it was just because we were flying by the seats of our pants. Oh, yeah, we didn't know we, what want, we, were we wanted to make a record. I hadn't, I mean, th- that was like really one of the first records I ever made. Yeah, we didn't know what we were And there doing. were so many mistakes. There were so many things wrong with it, yeah. you know, and, and I was just, you know, if I could go back in time and, and just like watch it, what, what I would do to just see, well, it's funny. Because I'll have to put the link to the documentary because remember when we shot the, <laughs> we have that. Gosh, that was a day. Yeah. So that's going to be in the, uh, man, I keep hitting this mic. That's going to be in the description box. We'll have that in there. Um, mm-hmm. The CM represent documentary. That was, that was us. Yeah. Uh, you will see the whole studio when it was unfinished. You will see it as an unfinished basement and it looks like, you know, freaking Hitler's bonker or something. It's just it's you're going to see me trying to be cool. Does not work. And the people that I work you're gonna with, you're going to see me trying to be cool, and it and it wasn't working. And the people that I work with know this, so they're like, <laughs> like, am I cool? No, you're, you're not. Well, we'll we'll post that there. Some 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 but, folks are going to yeah, get a laugh uh, out of it, but uh, well, yeah, dyslexia. I um, I have a very minor case of it, but I can't spell good. Uh. You know, I'm. I consider myself more illiterate. I follow life by a set of unwritten rules, so it doesn't. <laughs> it just, <laughs> you just crack me up. It, you know, it it is what it is. But I love a. Uh, you know, it didn't stop me. You know, even though I couldn't spell, I could read it. Well, there were a couple of moments when we were tracking that that album. Mm-hmm. CM represent. CM represent. Yeah. Self entitled. 
I think uh, what was the last what was the last track on that? Re- do Do you remember? Uh, it was. Uh, it had so- the slide guitar in it. There's a soldier freestyle, yeah. Da 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 da. Yeah. And yeah, that one yeah. that one line, uh, man of sage. Man of is sage. Is that in there? Yeah. That's in that one. And we and had we no went, clue. What we it had meant. no idea what it was because that was just a freestyle, and I don't even know if we comped it. I think it was just you for two two and a half minutes, just just going, going on the mic. Yeah. And uh, we had to look that up because even at seven, you know, seventeen, eighteen, I didn't, I didn't fully grasp what that meant. And then I was like, that was pretty supernatural, uh-huh. you know, that that was literally. And if you don't know what that means, go look it up. Go look it up. See, go look it homework. up, like we did. Yeah. So that was a that was that was an incredible time in my life personally. I, obviously, we had it's just. Uh, so many great moments mm-hmm. that was actually in this room, wasn't mm-hmm. it? I think it wasn't. Oh, there. Did we do some of it in here, though? Mm-mm. Okay. I guess it in wasn't here we there. worked out. That was about it. And then we had rehearsals. That's right. When we, when we did do live shows. That's right. So that was fun. Yeah, the live shows, we had um, that was Keith, Keith and Eric from way, way back when. Hey we got we to get them on at some point. I don't. I think Keith's back in Texas. Eric is still around. Okay. I got to get Eric back over here. Damn it, um, Keith, come back. What are you doing? He's probably working, you know. He's probably up there, like, catching an armadillo or something. <laughs> so we did the live shows. Uh, we graduated high school. Mm-hmm. We kind of went our separate ways. Uh, yeah. You went off to... I can't remember the name of that town. Morganton. Mor- Morganton? Morganton, North Carolina. Morganton, North Carolina. And got married. Um, mm-hmm. Was working at a factory. Yeah. I was a mechanic at a factory called Leventon. Shout out to all my Leventon people. And... <laughs> <laughs> And, um, you can take the boy. You can take uh, the boy out of the hip hop world. You can't take go. the hip hop out there of the uh, the security right. officer. Yeah, and um, <laughs> so we went. Uh, I was a mechanic there, and they found out that I rapped. One day, I was just writing something, just just randomly writing, and something around a machine. I went to check it out. I came back, and my paper was gone. And I was like, Ugh! And um, found out that this 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 girl where we took it, it was showing. All I saw was her running to different lines, showing. Look what Cody wrote. Look what Cody wrote. Cody can rap. Cody can rap. And I was forced to rap it for him. And that turned into what they called Friday freestyle. Whenever we worked our last day, we knew where they worked four days in a row. Our last day, we always called Friday. <laughs> and the last day, on our last break. They wanted me to rap for him. And we did that for about, I want to say, a couple months. Wow. At least. Now, you were doing graveyard shifts. Yep. I'm still doing graveyard shifts. I don't sleep. Yeah. Like, I don't even know what the sun is. (laughs) I mean, this has been, what, four or five years now you've been on that cycle? Yeah. Uh, Six to six. Six uh, p.m. to six a.m. Used to work four days straight and then have four days off. Now it's kind of like two on, two off, three on, three off, stuff like right. that. Right. So, but a lot of things have changed besides that cycle in the sense that things didn't really pan out in Morganton. Um, no. If it, You know, uh, we can, we're not going to get into it, but we'll just briefly say things didn't, things just didn't work out. Mm. You're back in central North Carolina. Um and the security job Let, yeah. let's talk about i mean that's that's a huge Shift. part of your story now yeah um, and and it's the the story the the stories of others obviously with confidentiality because that's you know part of the job but hmm. um very inspiring and very very eye opening some of the things that you've witnessed. Yeah. Um, came back in November last year, you know, long story short, no, basically a lot of stuff fell apart. Yeah. <laughs> uh, got divorced, lost the house, a lot of stuff, but came back. Um, first I got a job at uh, Lowe's foods in the meat department. 
Uh, I was okay with it. Uh, my mother works at UNC, and she was like, why don't you apply for the security officer position? I was like, well, what do I got to lose? <laughs> so I went ahead and did it, and I got the job, and I fell in love with it. I love what I do. I can wake up and be happy to go to work. Does that mean I don't have bullshit that I have to deal with on a regular <laughs> basis? No. I have to deal with a lot. But I'm willing to because I love it. Yeah. I, I love Well, Mace is the first. Oh. That's yeah. that's a that's a start. <laughs> so funny story, you know, uh I carry Mace and a taser, so I had to get Mace and Taser. Yeah. Taser, um, taser, 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 <laughs> four nine or one three. We four, we ten, may we, we may have to uh, put that clip up. Go Do ahead. you have it? Can you send that to me? Yeah. We may have to insert that in like right now. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Play. Taser, taser, taser. Ah! <laughs> I used not good language. Uh, <laughs> then I had to get maced, which sucked. And people are like, well, what would you rather do again? Get maced or get tased? I say neither. But if I had to choose, you know, when you get tased, it's terrible. A lot of people think it's like an electric shock, but it's more like a vibration of your entire body that can't move. It, you know, it decapacitates your muscles. Like you can't move. Uh, but, you know, last for five seconds and you're done. Mace is horrible it it can last up to half an hour if you're if you have a bad uh, or hours because yeah. you came over the right the yeah day it reactivated so i the, got maced hurricanes were in the playoffs yeah whoop, which whoop. we're not that's a whole oh my we're not even getting into that because no. we could be here for, for like seven days no but um so i got maced um went home washed it all out poured milk on my head had a great time <laughs> Came over here, I was helping him move some stuff, and I started sweating, and it reactivated. Triggered. It. And I was like, so he, I think I was upstairs, and you were, you were somewhere, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden he hears, ah! He's <laughs> like, what was that? <laughs> and it was just like, ah! And uh, just, you know, uh, it just reactivated and sucked completely. I hated every part of it. Um... But yeah, but it was worth it. Um, so that's that. That was one that really did suck. But the job itself is great. I've experienced a lot. I've experienced yeah. some good times. I've experienced some bad times. I've seen stuff that's rough to see. And anybody that works in a hospital setting, whether you're security officer, you know, NA, RN, doctor, whatever, you're gonna see things that are gonna bother you. It's yeah. just it's just part of the job. Yeah. And a lot of people can view it as a, just a paycheck. A lot of people can view it as, well, this is all I could get, but I'm very thankful for the job that I have. And those hard moments, you know, remind me that, you know, you, you might not have a lot of time or you might not know what's just around the corner. So, you know, death is going to take care of itself. And I deal with a lot of uh, mental patients. And... What I've always, what I've learned is that you know, death is gonna come on its own time. Don't let it be by your hands. Don't, you know, don't try to force it. It's coming regardless. Yeah. Force life. Be in mm. control of life. Do what you have to do to be here the next day. It really, it's it's so cliche, and they use it all the time at the hospital, but it really is one day at a time. It is. That's all you can do. Yeah. That's all you and can do. I've talked to people who are suicidal. I've talked to people who are even homicidal at one point. I've talked to people wow. who just are coming for, who are going cold turkey from drug addiction. I've talked to people with eating disorders. I, I, it's just, you know, and, and it is various age groups. You know, there could be a 75 year old man with dementia to this little five year old that just went crazy one day and just started, you know, wanted to hurt family members. And it's nuts. Wow. And it, it, it's taught me a lot about to look at the person, look at what they've been through, then just, you know, the stories are just like, oh, they're this evil person that's done this. I'm like, oh, well, you know, they, they're sick and there's stuff that's going on. Yeah. And, you know, um, 
they're still people. You still love them. You still try to give them hope. And that's why I have such big respect for everyone who works in a hospital field because it is rough, but is so rewarding too. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So you've told me a couple of specific stories. And again, without, you know, breaking the confidentiality mm-hmm. duty, um, you got one or two that you'd like to share. And if so, okay. Just, I just, got one funny, one funny story, and then one kind of sad story that I actually wrote a verse about. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's that perfect segue. <clears throat> so let's go to the funny story first. It's kind of lighten everything. Um, sure. <laughs> there is this uh, old man. Uh, we have a geriatric unit, and he was a. Uh, I was. I did. I do my rounds. Um, and he was holding this little container with a cupcake in it. And you know, I was rolling by. He he came to me. He's like. He's like, can you help me, officer? And I said, yeah, what's going on? He said, at first I thought he wanted me to open the container so he could eat the cupcake. But then all of a sudden, he holds it out in his hand like this, and he goes, can you tell me how to cook this potato? I was like, uh, uh uh-huh. And he's like, can you tell me how to cook this potato? I said, uh, sir, that's not a potato. That's a cupcake. And then there was a nurse next to him who was just be like, I've already told you that's not a cupcake. That's not a potato. That's a cupcake. He's like, I wasn't asking you. I was asking your boy here. <laughs> and uh, oh, it gets better. And um, so he asked me again. He's like, how do you cook this potato? And I said, you don't. Just eat it the way it is. Just eat it. It, it's it's fine the way it is. The nurse like I've already told you that. He's like I wouldn't eat this if it fell out of your ass. <laughs> He's like you had to bring your boy up here for me to figure out it's a potato. And I said, sir, I'm just passing through. He's like, well, you could pass through somewhere else. I gotta figure out how to cook this potato. Dude, and I left. That's like out of a movie or something. That's it was amazing. That's spectacular. It's great. That is that's. That's gold. It's too stupid to make up. It was awesome. Man. It made me laugh, and it was great. So let's get into let's get into oh. what you wrote. Oh yeah. So get your tissues ready. No. Um. You know, you see a lot of people come in. Yeah. Various stories, very thing happen. <clears throat> there is this one girl that I talked to. You know, say maybe she was maybe twenty, and. She was just, without getting into any specific details, uh, she just felt alone. She felt like no one cared. And when I started talking to her, she kept using the term, you know, will they hear me? Will they talk to me? Will they know what what I'm going through? Will they even care? Uh, You know, the, the, the same thing. Will they, will they, will they, will they? And I decided to write a verse about it because... You know, I felt like that. I think everybody, everybody feels like that at a point in their lives. Like, you know, will these people care about me? Will these people know who I am? Can I scream as loud as I can? Will they hear me? Can I make as much noise? Will they notice? You know, can I be so successful? Will they see me? And I think that's how she felt. And there's a lot more that went into it. But that major part affected me because I kind of saw my younger self. Yeah, you know, I had a great family. My family's awesome. I love them to death. Oh, they're great, it's just, man. You know, you know, that's fine. You can have an awesome family. It's just you know when you go through, you know, social aspects of your life and you keep getting blown off by people, you start thinking, will people know to notice me? Yeah. So I can. Yeah. Do well, for, yeah. Do it. The title of it's called Will Day. The unknown depths of an ocean floor equals the unknown of walking out my door. Will I return or disappear? Will my screens fall on deaf ears? Will they hear my cry for help? Or will they care about them and no one else? Will they know that I feel pain? Will they walk by me all the same? Will they offer a helping hand? Will they stick to their selfish plan? Will they see I am so much more than some think that I'm here for? Waiting for my light to shine again. Will they stay with me to the end? I try to live my life every day to help others. Will they? So it's great. Yeah. It, um, as always from any, any, <laughs> anything that you do always 
Yeah, it yeah. is is I'm, I'm always it just a very fan. hit me. It hit me deep, and I think everybody that I work with has a story that sticks with them. And maybe it's a couple, but it's just like one thing happened that sticked with you, and like you know, it drives you to try to go that extra mile. And I know so many people that go the extra mile that don't get the recognition they deserve. Yeah, and they deserve so so much more because they do an amazing job. A lot of people I work with, they do such amazing jobs. And I'm very blessed to have them as co-workers. So. It's, it's just so inspiring. You know, I'm at, I'm at a loss for words. It's to be able to go, <laughs> you know, seriously, I mean, to be able to go in and out and do that, it, it really takes a gift. Mm-hmm. Not everybody can do it. No, no. You have to have a calling for it, mm-hmm. which you definitely do. And I, it doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, I never, I never, in a million years, we would have never guessed that this is where you probably would have ended up. Mm-hmm. From rapping to security officer, man. But that. it does, but it doesn't surprise me. And are you thinking about at some point doing more, perhaps on that line of work? Yeah. If you're at liberty to talk about it, I don't know. Yeah. If- uh, eventually, I'm thinking about uh, going all the way and becoming a police officer there. Uh, I never had any aspirations to before this, hmm. but just seeing how much I love doing what I do and help people, it just making making people smile there. Um, yeah, I had a friend of mine. Uh, I, I visit her a lot, and she was like, "You're always smiling when you come in here. You make you make this place happier." And I was like, you "Really?" She's like, "Yeah, people just walking in here frowning." I was like, "Well, I mean, you know, there's, it's a the hospital. Hospital is a tough." There, there's a, there's Tough already environment. there's already enough sadness there. Yeah, and you know it's not you know I have bad days. I've had I had, I had Everybody's very gone. bad days. Yeah, but if I can at least help either the nurses or the patients smile, or even crack a joke like I love doing, um, it's worth it. You know, just to I I will put myself out there as embarrassment just so it can make their shift just for a moment less stressful. And I think that's, you know, what, where we get away from sometimes because being the security officer or being the police officer there, you know, you're very, you know, you answer calls. Sometimes you have to deal with situations. Um, but on the downtime, I like to just do my rounds and make sure everyone's doing okay and smiling, having a good time and, you know, enjoy coming to work. So that means making stupid jokes like, uh, I had to get a new butt because mine had a crack in it. I'll do it. So <laughs> that's fine with me. I don't care. So future aspirations, we yeah. we touched on that in one respect. Also, it's artistic. A creaky chair. There's some farm animals up in this place. Uh, yep. Uh, artistically speaking. Of course, I, I know you. You're. Mm-hmm. It's always going to be a part of you. Mm-hmm. I was very creative. Do Do you see this? Uh, do you see a rebirth of perhaps a a career? Uh, you know, back, get, getting back into it after all these years. I certainly have more to talk about. Yeah. Uh, from a perspective that maybe not a lot of people do. Yeah. Um. I mean, I, I always write stuff down. Um, I always, you know, it helps deal with, you know, the situations, but it's certainly a lot more impactful, I think, now because I can see certain things and I have so much knowledge about, you know, mental health and um, now more than I ever did by going through certain classes that UNC provides was awesome. And... I know there's still a lot of stigma around mental health and stuff. And I think that right now is my main passion to kind of like help break down some of that and kind of like figure out how to help people. And, but as far as the creative aspect, it's just, you know, it's more a therapeutic tool, but I can tell I'm light years better than I was when we started. And I think it's time to do something. It's a different, it's a different, yeah. I think it's fun. time at some point. Yeah. If you guys want to see something, post in the comments. Leave yeah. a like. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Send me memes. Do what you gotta do. I mean, even if even if it was just a single, 
Yeah. Just yeah. do, you know, quick, quick music video. Just do something. That'd be awesome. I, I miss it, man. I got to be honest with you. I mean, we, and we've always talked about it. We've always been in touch. And I mean, it's just amazing how <sighs> five years goes by so quickly. Nuts. It's nuts. And uh, however, nothing's really changed. I mean, everything's changed. But nothing's changed. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wear it's, leather jackets and have tattoos now, but I'm still me. You're turning into me. Well, I but I don't have the I tattoos. Oh, my, man, I need help. I can't turn into you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fil- film and acting real quick before I forget, because I have it written down. Okay. Let's talk about that. So oh, at, yeah. at community college... Way back, you yep. were you were in a course. What was that? Uh, theater. It was theater and college. Me and An elective. Uh, then. Yep. Me and uh, one of my best friends in the world, Ariana Ty Singer. Sup, Ariana. And we got to get her on. Yeah. Um, we did acting together. Uh, won an award. Both of us, most outstanding student in theater. That's great. Which was awesome because we just killed it. I bet. Uh, when you tape of that. No, which we should have. Man, I, I, I would have loved to see that. It was kind of like, you know, it was a scene where I was a police investigator and she was a witness to a crime and I had an interrogator, which was fun. <laughs> uh, but everyone else, you know, they were coming out there, they had their scripts in their hands or it was supposed to be a performance. People had their scripts in their hands. People were forgetting lines and me and her was just like, you know what? Screw it. Let's go all out and blow everybody you gotta out go of the all water. Out. Yeah. yeah, you got to go all out. And I've always loved acting, and um, and because I like that you could become a different person. Uh, you know, you could you could develop a character and give them their own backstories, and it was just a great thing. Uh, one most outstanding student in theater, both of us did. Uh, then I went to act in a couple of um, plays for uh, my church at the time. I played. Everywhere from a guy going to hell to a guy killing himself and other people, and yeah, it yeah. Well, I remember, I remember hey. one year uh, seeing you in one of the rooms, you know, because that that whole production, oh yeah, you went to it. I went there. That, it, that, <laughs> yeah, what was that like? Judgment House. Well, yeah, um, but it was like 20, 2011, 2010. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like almost ten years ago, mm. and. It was just great. Yeah. You by far were outsta- <laughs> out of what? A cast of, I, I got to say, 50, 80, 100 people. Yeah. And all in different a lot build- of extras, yeah. All in different buildings because they, what, what, what is that? Like an hour long show, hour and a half where you walk, uh, like you yeah, physically you, walk as you an walk, audience you walk member. Through, you walk through the church and it's like you walk through every aspect of a story where, you know, the beginning of it's it. It's really creative. The tribulations, then you go through judgment, then you go through heaven and hell and all that. So Yeah, it's it was it's it very... Was, it was really well done. I mean, it'll spook it'll spook people out. Like if they don't yeah. have if they don't have the right perspective of the word and oh, like, yeah. you know grace and and we we were talking about you know if we're uh, you know if we were in like the hell scene or the very intense scene, it's just like you know go all out and do what you can. Yeah. And finally there and you know when I did the scene, make people think. Yeah. Right. Art is supposed to make people think. It's supposed to convey an emotion it's supposed to move somebody because mm, when i did the scene where i had i was a kid who was struggling was with, that with the bed yeah yeah I, that i was um, there for that i played a, i played a kid who who was struggling with self-harm and because he had a hard family life and ended up taking a bunch of pills i killed two people and then killed myself from the overdose of the pills and it was a very intense and hard scene because we never did anything like that because we didn't know is this too far or is like, but at the end of the day, it's like, it's real. It happens. And now you were doing that multiple times a day, right? Uh, about 20 times a night with for like 20, 20 times a, up to 20, 20 times a, a night, different groups. Yeah. For about three, four, to, three, three, four nights. So, and they looked at me, they're like, just go all out. I'm like, are you sure? They're like, do what you can. I thought I was like, okay. I was like, <laughs> just, really 20, got into it because I, I i don't remember like all the details i just remember it was about a minute or a two minute scene mm-hmm. it was one of the best scenes i've ever seen as far as from a dramatic standpoint it was unbelievable mm-hmm. and you just went all out mm-hmm. and it, it 
I was probably the seventh or tenth group that night. The sun was down at that point. Yeah. It's and you were already halfway in going for it. It was maybe nine o'clock. We didn't get out of there till like ten or ten thirty, eleven. Wow. Think about it, two minute scene. <laughs> well, you're two minutes scene, but tw- you know, a, a, a very difficult two minute scene mm-hmm. and twenty times in one night and delivering it. And you know, it was time very and time again. I had to kind of. How did you ch- how how did you change that up? What, did you change at any time the perspective um, or or the re like? Did you find a new? I think what I did was I kind of changed the way that I approached it. Uh, okay. There could be a scene where I was just you know really going at it just wildly you know doing the 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 um killing scene i hate, I hate to say it but it's, it's acting i acted yeah. i didn't really do it and you'll never find them um <laughs> <laughs> no i'm kidding i'm just i'm just being serious um but you know i would, I would change the scene where it's like from a wild motion to kind of just a more methodical Right. Um, just to just to change it up, just to just play to change, around. The pacing yeah. was very. Sometimes I'd do it really quick, and other times I would drag, drag on it out. words. And you know, you, you're an actor too, because you of know, course you, you yeah. drag it on. Well, you got you got to play around with it because you, yeah. you just don't know. There might be some because it, on like, paper it, it's one thing, but yeah. when it's a real living organism, there's going to be time shifts. There's going to be things that just work and things that don't work as well. Yeah, it's like. A different word, the way you say it, can trigger different emotions. It, yes, and yes, it's like, and it's that's like, really, really well said. Mm-hmm. Really well said. It's like there, there. I think one of them was just like, "No one cares about me," and you could either be like really sad. It's like no one cares about me, or you could just be really mad. Like no one cares about me, or you could just do it like you don't care. It's like no one cares about me, and yeah, there's a thousand yeah. different ways to deliver. Mm-hmm. I think that's so many also, choices. Yeah, and that's also the one thing I love about acting. Again, you know, there's different ways to do it. Just like there's yeah. multiple different styles of hip hop, there's multiple different styles of acting. What's the overlap between before we get to the shootout? While, while we're on this, what's the overlap between? You know, hip hop is extremely vocal oriented, mm-hmm. extremely lyrically oriented. Tie together the. Well, visually now too with music yeah, videos. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Tie together the storytelling similarities between developing a character and portraying a character and really perhaps doing the exact same thing in a in a song format. Um, the way you tell the story. Okay. Uh sometimes, you know, when I, I like to think of it like the way that you do a song make it fit the music video right it's kind of like if you're telling a story if you're if you're rapping about a relationship that's going through a hard time your video should project that if you're rapping about you're just loving life and everything's awesome your video should project that but it you know it's the way that you just tell the story and sometimes you know with with hip-hop you tell it vocally you tell it with your voice but it's the same thing. The way you say things can change an emotion and trigger different ones. Uh, just like you know, if you're if you're rapping and you're very um, happy, you're not going to talk about. And, and you know, if you're very happy, your words are going to be happy. You're not going to be in battle mode, where it's like you're looking through your eyebrows and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you know, you know, you're just going off and you're happy. <laughs> um, and with acting, it's the same thing. You know, if you're playing a character that is very happy, they're not always like downgraded looking at the floor. They're looking up and around. So it's the same way. It's just how you go about it. Of what you want to, what emotion do you want to trigger? Yeah. I think that's the biggest correlation. Like, what do you want this to be about? Yeah. Who is, you know, what is this story? So that's cool, man. And it can go through triggers. You know, you can start happy and sad, start sad and happy. There's so many different ways. I think that's why music and, theater have surpassed time yeah because there's so even before it was recorded yeah you know i mean well there's just so much from uh a a classic a classical standpoint it was always written down Mm -hmm. but it was never recorded until this last century yeah I hope most of what I said made sense. So uh, very coherent, <laughs> very clear. You ever say things that sound good in your head, and then when you say them out loud, you're like, "No, get back in there." So. Every day, but okay, that yeah. was great, man. You have nothing to worry about with that. Mm. 
Maybe some of the stuff earlier at Japan Express, but That's fine. We'll, we'll keep that. We'll keep, keep that. that on DL. What happens at Japan Express stays, stays at Japan on Express. Twitter. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, let's get to the shootout. So you know I've got like one, two, three, four, five, like eight, eight bullet points, and then the one last bingo question at the end, which mm. I ask everybody. So I'm just going to say one word. You just, it, you just expand for a sentence or two and you know whatever if it drags out a little bit it drags out no so kind of like get my first thought about it yeah all right rapper uh nf is my favorite right now just the way that he's able to tell a story and trigger the emotions within you is basically the best i've heard he's my you know great okay cool i'm trying to read my handwriting here oh (laughs) mumble Horrible. Lyricist. Amazing. Gangster. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> contemporary in the sense of a trap, perhaps. Which it, it you, you know that's yeah, a whole yeah. that's a whole thing. It can be it can go very different ways. Um it's a vibe. It's a that, vibe. That's what I'll say. I know I'm like answering this, but it's I, had not, a, I had an idea. Yeah. It's a vibe. It's just not mine. Okay. Yeah. And and likewise. Um, mm-hmm. But that's just me personally. Choruses. Love them. I love if you have a chorus that it's catchy, but ties into the song. Melodic? Mm, depends. Okay. In that genre specific. Yeah. Especially it, anything goes. Mm-hmm. Verse. It has to mean something. Yeah, that's, that's a good. Don't answer. just spit that's, out nonsense. That's, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Fifty cent. Half dollar. <laughs> 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 no, um, you know, he's dope. What can I say? I I, I grew. I, you know, hey man, I, I, as a child, I listened to fi- you know, I, as a kid, I, I listened fifty. So I'm I'm there with you. Yeah. I'm there with you. He's he's got a he's got a swag about him that just is unmatched. You know, uh, you know. I, I think we I think we both feel the same way. I think we, have, we haven't talked about this in a while, but notorious. Mm. It was all a dream. Grew reading hip hop magazine. Yeah, I, I love I love uh, love Biggie. He was awesome. Yeah, Tupac. He was good. Tupac was awesome. He he was ahead of his time, I think. Yeah. Because he talked I've heard, about... I've heard multiple people say that. Well, I mean, who else at that time did you hear talk about I wonder if heaven has a ghetto? It's like, no one, no one was thinking like that. Hmm. And, you know, he was very true to who he was. I think that, you know, he just wasn't, you know, I think he was just way too ahead of his time. And if he, he could have been bigger than he was, I believe. I didn't write this one down, but it, as it just comes to mind, old school sound. I think it was more unique than now, because now you can kind of pick out the same uh, samples or same triggers, samples, yeah. same riffs, same stuff. But oh, in the old school, you know, you you have very limited to work with, and you know this as a musician. Yeah, you had just maybe a drum set guitar couple, couple, bass well and, and piano even like the, just the, the or few, even hip-hop you the just few had drum machines that yeah. you had you know specifically with hip-hop but they were they were diversifying somehow by yeah. just processing so you, you had to get creative with the beats you made so it's very uh old school i think got more creative than now i mean now because you have so many choices it's crazy because you think it'd be the opposite you have this expansion of technology that creates so many different sounds, you think, do you and think a lot it, of stuff can sound the same. Do you think it provokes laziness? I think it provokes whatever will sell. That's a great. That's a that's a, a fantastic answer. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what would you tell? This is this is the one I was telling you about. Okay, what would you tell? If you could go back in time, what would you tell your 15-year-old self? Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. I ask everybody this. Uh, Who is over 15? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, put down the donuts. No. Um, <laughs> honestly, I would tell him... 
you know, you're going to go through things and your life's not going to be as bad as you think it is. You're going to overthink a lot of things. You are going to compare your failures to other people's and you are going to only see yourself in the areas you messed up. But it's okay. Relax. It's not it's not as bad as you think. As you get older, you're going to realize that you know, you're going to have to choose joy. It's not just going to fall out of the sky. <laughs> you're going to have to fight for it. But you know, you have a good family life. The right friends will come. You're going to find people that are going to that are going to that are going to want to be around you just for who you are. You're going to end up going through the hardest moment of your life when you get, you know, 27. But on the other side of that, it's going to be something greater. I just tell them just, you know, what my mother always told me, you'll be all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, that's great. Uh, nothing really to be said after that one. Um, social media, we'll post it in the description box. Oh, they'll, yeah. they'll know where to find you. And yeah. And for everybody at work, you want to find me? You know where I am. <laughs> Big country. Don't know why that's my nickname. Big South, if you're watching, I don't know why they... It's just something... I don't know. I want to have to talk about that later. My nickname is not Big Country. It Stop is, it. It is now. <sighs> You, you know I'm not going to let that one down. No. I just found out about this tonight, by the way. Yeah, apparently somebody on day shift thought, uh, you know, nicknamed me Big Country, and I don't know why. But whatever. Oh, it's know. sticking. It is sticking. Better than asshole, I guess. So. <laughs> 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 on that note... Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate this, you this, having this, me on. This yeah. was so great. When you texted me a couple of days ago, I was I was like, "Yeah, we got to get you on." And I, I was I was gonna reach out uh, at some point. We've there's ten there's ten there's ten artists in the wings, so it's mm -hmm. but it just worked out because you and I are 10, 15 minutes from each other. It's yeah. like let's just go get yeah, dinner. Yeah, yeah. Let's come back. Let's hang. And uh, it's been a couple of months since we hung, a, a few months since we've hung out so mm -hmm. it was it was due time and guys support this it's it's an amazing thing he's doing <laughs> he brings on anybody literally uh if, if you're an artist if you're creative he doesn't care dancing painting music yeah. acting send us send us a message hit us in the dm send us an email slide into his dms yeah yeah well thanks for sticking around and and watching this um you'll probably see some more content out of this guy and the uh, artist lounge. I'm I'm so blessed to call him a friend and oh. a sorry, go ahead. Dude, <laughs> it's all part of it. Yeah. It's all part of it, man. I'm I'm just you know, we've we've had a lot of life together. We've mm -hmm. we've gone through a lot of a lot of stuff. More um, than probably a lot of people yeah know. A lot a lot of phone calls that you called me up with that i and i called you up with over mm. the years and just stuff that y you know we never would have thought we would have been nah. calling each other for about. two people who are so different yeah but so alike at the same time it's nuts yeah. for sure well i appreciate it man it's fun it's been cool yeah we'll see you guys on the next one thanks for watching later